So I'm currently starting this vlog on the pet room floor with Crumble and I just thought I'd give you an update on him because he is so, so close to being 30 months old. Obviously not without his issues. He is still in heart failure, obviously. And his back legs are not working quite as well as they should. But one recent issue that we've been dealing with is back in November, I'm not sure if you remember if you watched the vlogs, he had an abscess on his face. That turned out to be some sort of tooth abscess. And when that happened, he did lose the incisor where the abscess actually was on that side. And ever since then, because of that, the incisor that's above that has been not growing properly. It's been growing kind of wonky and it curling into the back of his mouth. So I'll put a picture of what that looks like on screen. Not nice for him. Obviously, if I had left it, that would have continued growing at a really weird shape. And it's been very, very painful. So for the first time in a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, he actually had that trimmed. And thank God his vet can come into our house and do that because that just makes the entire thing a whole lot stressful, a whole lot less stressful for him. And he's actually had it done two times now, I think. And yeah, so he has to have that done. We didn't, we weren't quite sure whether it was every two weeks or if we could leave it a bit longer. It turns out it's just about every three weeks he has to have that done. So there is your cool update. Bunch of health issues, but he's still here. He's still cooking, aren't you, bud? In terms of other things to update you on, I'm just trying to do a lot more things I enjoy again. As you saw in the first clip of the vlog, I went horse riding for the first time in 10 years. I have not been on a horse in a very, very long time. And I was kind of nervous, but my friend asked me, do you want to go horse riding? And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to give it a go. I'm not sure if I can even physically do this anymore, but I'm going to give it a go. And it actually wasn't that bad. So I'm just trying to do a lot more things like that and push myself even though I am exhausted all the time. One thing I'm also doing that I'm not really sure how much of this I can film. I would like to film because I think you guys would be really interested and I think it'd be really helpful to them if I could help to fundraise and things like that. But one thing that I have started doing, I did the first time last week, is volunteering. Me and my friend have started volunteering every single week at a place where exotic pets go. Are you nibbling my finger? eat the food, not my finger. Um, it's like a refuge for exotic pets, whether they've been found outside or dumped, things like monkeys, wolves, coatis, raccoons, all of that I'm caring for now once a week. And last week was really good. It was really interesting seeing all of the different animals. Polo, please don't knock my camera down. It just took me 10 minutes to get it to stay up on there. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, it was really interesting seeing the different animals Although we're, we're there with like monkeys, wolves, big cats, things like that, I'm still like drawn to the guinea pigs and the sugar gliders and things. So I'm not entirely sure how much I can share on social media, but I will get around to asking if I can film it in a video and show you all of the animals at some point. But so far, so good. I'm really enjoying working with different animals, just cleaning them, feeding them, things like that. And then coming home and doing it all over again with you. Isn't that right? But Grandma's just enjoying some extra food. You've got it all around your face. It's all on your nose. We're just hiding away because the other boys are circling us and are trying to steal it, aren't they? You don't need extra food because you're round enough as it is. You're round enough. <laughs> no. Shall we show everyone your new basket? Shall we show them? Hey, I got a new basket for my free room. Here it is. Not very exciting. Just a five pound basket from B&M. Oh, you are demonstrating, good boy. Give it up, come on. No, come on. What's this? Come show them your basket. Come and show them. Polo. Yay, good boy. Do you love it? Mummy's not taking the tag off because that is my worst habit. <laughs>
you ready? Are you ready to film your segment? Stop being so lazy. So we have just had a really exciting delivery from a company called Happy and Polly. And I've been eyeing up the things on their website for a while because they sell some really unique cat products that you can't find anywhere else. So when they asked if Hubba wanted to try some of their products and if I wanted to share them with you guys, of course I had to say yes. So in here is a bunch of stuff for Hubba himself. On the top I'll start with some of the cat toys. This he has already pulled out the box and chewed a bit. This is a lollipop toy and on the bottom is a catnip stick that he is going crazy for. What do you think? <laughs> this is, oh, it's nice. What about this end? What about this end? Oh, that's nice. Okay, you play with that. Get it. Get it. Give me that. <laughs> Ready? Then we also have these two toys. This one is a duck, I think, and this one is a chicken. Very cute, the kind of texture that he likes to play with, which is why I picked these. He likes rusty toys. What's this? Come get it. Come get it. The next thing in here is a water fountain, and he does have a water fountain at the moment, but I made the mistake of buying a plastic one, and we have really hard water here, so it is pretty much impossible to clean. Plastic's also not really good for bacteria, so this one is ceramic, which is gonna be so much better, and I had such a hard time choosing which one to get because all of the designs of the water fountains are super cute. <gasps> what have you got? What have you got? You can play with those in a minute. All of the designs of their fountains are so cute, I just could not pick one. But this one I went for is very, very cute, and it definitely suits our house style. So here it is, it's just a green ceramic fountain. On the top is a little sprout where the water comes out, and it has a little mushroom, it's so cute. I'm gonna go and switch this immediately. So the last thing they sent is actually a feeding station, and Hubble is really awkward when it comes to food because I've tried everything. I've tried tilted bowls, plates, he just gets it absolutely everywhere. And the only thing I've not tried with him is a raised up feeder. So I picked out these bowls and these are so cute. Obviously not the most important thing, but a lot of cat items and cat furniture and cat accessories is not very cute. And this fits our house style perfectly. If you've seen our house, it's kind of like Scandinavian themed. And this is gonna fit perfectly, so I'm gonna try this with him and see what he thinks. Ready? Sit. <laughs> Speak. Good boy. You like it? You love it. Do you want it? What's this? Oh, you love it. Good boy. at it. It's just for water. <laughs> You're silly.
So I just thought I would show you how I've made the cage a lot more accessible for Crumble, now that he can't get around as well. I do like to have an active cage that's open and active, and I've tried to keep that element for the other boys because they are still young, they do need to be as active as possible, but tried to make it a lot more safer for Crumble. So I tend to not have the shelves in the cage, obviously unless I've got a dig box like this one, but I did add back in the second shelf, which I don't tend to do unless I've got older rats, and none have ever been as old as Crumble, so that is why I've added back in this shelf, and he tends to stick to the bottom level of the cage just to save energy and stuff, so I've made sure he has everything he needs on this level. If he did want to attempt to get to the top of the cage, which I've not really seen him do in the past couple of weeks, he could either go up this branch or onto this shelf and then onto the bamboo thing at the back. And then just in case he does attempt it, which I'm not really expecting him to at this point, I have added in plenty of fall breakers, things like this and this, and obviously the shelves will catch him if he does make it some way down, but he doesn't really try to tend to, he tends to stick to the bottom. And the other boys are pretty good at taking in turns to sleep with him. He tends to sleep in here the most. Sometimes he will sleep in the litter tray, but you've always been a weird one for that, haven't you? So as I said, he has everything he needs all on one level. He sleeps in here. They get fed mostly on the floor, so he has food on the floor. He's got a litter tray, and he can still at the moment hop up onto this, and then easily hop up onto this. I don't have the extra, like, hook thing for this. Where is it? One of these, I cannot find this, but it is still pretty sturdy, it kind of moves a little bit, but it's not going to fall down and it does make it a lot lower that he can hop up onto this. He's then also got this hide if he wants to, sometimes I catch him sleeping in there. And then underneath is a tile, mostly to keep this level at the back, but if he gets too hot he can lie on the tile. We've got another litter tray at the back, and then a water bowl, which I can only put this at this height. Because of the perspex, I can't put it kind of this low down because he wouldn't be able to reach. So he can still get onto this level to drink. And this is as low as it will physically go. But he does also have a water bottle, which again, I can't put it too low down. I probably could give it a go. But it does tend to get stuck on the perspex. So that is as low as I can get it. But he does tend to drink mostly from this. But yeah, this is how the cage is looking. This is kind of Crumble's territory. And then up here is still fun and active for the other boys. Oh, also, I wanted to show you that I finally put the shelf above the rat cage up. And I think it looks really nice. It finishes off this section of the room really well. I can't really show you very well because I am quite short and it is really high up. But at the back, I put all of their agility kit just to get it out of the way and also display it. And then we also have all of the rat artwork. In order of when I got the rats, this one is Moose, this is Sprout, Sunday, Crumble, Humbug, Twix and Whisper. And then I have left some space because I've not done pudding, polo and crumpets yet. I might do that in this vlog because I've definitely been putting it off. Is he going to let you in? Is he going to let you in? Be nice. <laughs> let him in. Crumpet. <laughs> He's pulling you in. Whisper. You were here first. Say, I was here first. Let me in. Say, let me in. I feel like he tends to get forgotten about, but he is also really old. He is two years and one month, and he's doing really good. Still really active, as you can see, and not really aging at all. So I have good hopes that he's going to be around for a while yet too. And just because Crumble is the oldest, I think I forget that he is also pretty old. Aren't you, bud? And the babies bug you, don't they? They make you grumpy. Oh, steady. The babies bug you all the time, don't they? You're not a fan of younger rats, are you? No. See, no, I'm not. Yes, hello, you. Hello, you. There's too many of you. I can't give you all the attention you need. See, look, Whisper's jealous again now. Whisper's jealous again now. I know. I'm coming back. Coming back. <laughs> My goodness. You all want me at the same time. Someone's busy in a stick box, digging himself a bed. <laughs> he keeps sleeping in here, not sure why, but look, here he goes. That's exactly where he likes to sleep. You're so weird, Pudding. You are. <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. <laughs> Get him going. White rats and dig boxes do not go together very well. He's filthy all the time. 
aren't you? Your tail is brown. See, he clears all of the mud and the hay out the way, and then he sleeps on the bare plastic. Very odd. <laughs> you could just sleep in a Sputnik, but okay, bud. Something else really cool that's happened recently is Rue shed for the first time in my care. I was not expecting it this soon because her previous owner said she didn't shed at all in the year or so that she had her, so wasn't expecting it, but we have a very long snake shed. Not perfect, it kind of goes a bit gross towards the head end, and she did have a bit stuck still on her neck, so we're gonna work on getting a better shed next time. Not too sure what to do with this, I would keep it if it was like a perfect shed with the head attached, but it's not, so maybe I'll keep the next one, but she is now back in her usual spot, all the way at the back, avoiding me as much as possible, so I imagine she's probably quite hungry after all of that, so let's give her some quail eggs. So I just wanted to show you this package we were sent to our PO box by Hamsters We Love Store. They sell a variety of different sprays and plants and they've sent some for the mice to try and I am so excited to try them with them. There are so many different things in this box that I have personally never seen before and the mice have definitely not either. But thank you so much Hamsters We Love for sending these. If you're in the UK or the US I believe, I'll put their website in the description just in case you want to pick up any sprays etc for your hamsters, mice or other small pets. Definitely check them out because their variety they offer is really impressive. There's also an adorable sticker in here that's going straight on my laptop. <laughs> How cute, thank you. I'm so sad. I just came in here to give Crumble his medicine and I was about to spot clean the mice and you can still see, I'm not going to show anything upsetting or anything, but you can still see kind of where the burning is indented. I just came in and Meadow has passed away. I have no idea what happened because last night she was still fine and it must have only just happened based on her body condition. Um, she hadn't gone into talk or anything. She was literally just kind of as if she was walking up the cork log and had just stopped and her body had just stopped. Um, so I have no idea what happened, whether she had a heart attack or something. The way that she was lying wasn't like she'd like lied down to die, it was like she was still on her way up the cork log. So I am kind of in shock right now. I was, I keep prepping myself when I come in here that okay, Crumble's really old. Every morning I have to like hype myself up to expect the worst when I come in, but I was not expecting to find Meadow to be the one that passed away. She was only like a year and four months, I think. So she definitely should have been, you know, a lot older than that. So I have no idea what happened. Kind of in shock right now, but I still need to spot clean this enclosure. And I definitely want to check on the other mice. I don't want to wake them up to check on them, but my brain is telling me because I don't know why she passed away that I probably should. So I'm gonna spot clean this enclosure. And I have a bunch of new things for them that I wanted to put in. And I feel really sad that she's now not gonna experience them. They've got a new dig box and things, so I'll show you what I'm putting in and spot clean them. But yeah, Meadow has just passed away and I thought you guys should know because I am as much in shock as I'm sure many of you will be that she's not here anymore, so yeah. So here's some of the new things I want to put in for them. This I'm pretty sure I mentioned in a previous vlog. I got this from B&M. It was £4 and I've not had a chance to put it in yet. And then I also got this. I bought these to potentially sell in my store, but a few of them arrived with like the lid bit completely off. So I didn't want to sell anything that was not great standard. So this one is going to the mice. It's just like a bamboo core type thing. And then I also got this. I think these ceramic things are made to grow strawberries in, but I thought this would be a really cute hide for hamsters or mice, and really good in summer to keep them cool. Inside, all I've put in is a mixture of something new I'm trying, which is quartz granules, and I've mixed it in with cocoa fibre, which I probably should dampen down a bit, but just to give them a mini dig box inside their enclosure. So <laughs> let's put them in, hopefully a welcome distraction for them for losing their sister. Which spray should we go for? Let's do this one at the front because it's pretty. Oh, it's spiky. 
And then some of these at the back. Oh my goodness. else do we have? Oh, these look interesting. Whoa, whoa! <laughs> Come back! Cute! Oh my gosh, I didn't even see this was in here. How cute! Let's put this at the front with the other pretty one too. It is looking so cute. I hope this distracts them a bit because it's definitely helped me. Be free, go explore. I am currently sat in my office and it is chaotic in here. I somehow managed to find space to put another one of these shelves in here for all of the new store products and it arrived damaged so I'm waiting for a replacement and all of the new products are on every single inch of the floor in here and I am stressed. But I thought it might be a nice thing to answer some questions from my channel members every single month, every single vlog at the end and I've got a couple to answer. The first one is from Devon and that says what is your thoughts on bonding dwarf rats with standard rats? This one I don't really have much of an opinion on because I've never really experienced dwarf rats and I probably never will because there's not that many people breeding them in the UK but from what I've read of other people's experiences it tends to be a mixed bag of opinions. Some people do house them with standard rats and don't have any issues other people, people that breed them, some of them will advise just housing dwarf rats with other dwarf rats and I think that's easy enough to say if you have a constant supply or constant access to them but say for example you go to a breeder and just get dwarf rats next time around you can't find them, you don't have any available you obviously can't house that rat by itself so in that situation any rat would do I guess but I guess it depends on if you have any issues, if you decide to house them with standard rats and they either gain weight because of the food or they're getting picked on then I guess in that situation housing them just with dwarfs would probably be best but I don't really have much of an opinion if I was to experience them then maybe I would. Jessica wants to know I wonder how you get inspiration for setting out your rat and mouse enclosures so most of it when it comes to physically putting things in there and where to put them and how to set it up most of that just comes from up here in my brain but when it comes to seeing things to want to buy and certain setups and layouts I get most of my inspiration from rat cages, from rat Facebook groups if I'm scrolling and see a really nice layout I'll read the comments and see where they bought certain things from most of my mouse setup inspiration does come from Instagram whether it's mouse setups or hamster setups I will see a lot of those that really inspire me so I'll put some Instagram accounts 
that do really nice brow or mouth setups on the screen here somewhere but that's where most of my inspiration tends to come from. Alexa says, I hope you feel better soon, thank you. And how much money would be a good start for vet fund for three to four rats? A really complicated question. Yeah, this one is really complicated because it obviously depends on where you are in the world, how much the vets cost, how many rats you've got. I would say plan ahead for the worst case scenario where all four of those rats need vet treatment in the same month. Some vets will be good and just charge you one consultation fee if you take all of the rats or some of the rats with you, but just worst case scenario, say all four of those need to go for various different reasons, I would work out how much it generally costs to take one rat, can you hear that dog barking outside? How much it, how much it costs to take one rat, so for me it's about £80 for consultation and some sort of medication. So then times that by four, that is about £320, so maybe set aside £300 to £350 for those four rats. The likelihood of using that all at once is quite slim, but for more expensive things like emergency surgery, that tends to cost around that mark, so I think that's a fairly good number. Maybe a bit higher than most people would save, but that's what I tend to recommend for about four rats. And then they also wanted to know, do you prefer your cages to look more colourful or natural? I think at least for the rats I've had colourful a lot longer than I've had naturalistic and I definitely prefer natural for both of them, the rats and the mice. It's just way easier to set up, it's way easier to find items, you're not restricted by colours if you can't find a specific colour, it is just a lot easier and in my opinion at least I think it looks a lot nicer. Carrie wants to know which one of the rats and the mice give the best snoop boops? I would say the ones that are probably the most willing to accept snoop boops would be Polo, you can do pretty much anything to him and he does not care and in terms of the mice, probably Fleet. Heather would like another update on Mr Crumble Handsome Pants, I think I pretty much covered that at the start of the video and also want to know how I'm managing with the weather, getting warmer on my pots and other medical issues. I am not really coping with that at all, I'm staying inside as much as possible, I definitely feel worse, I don't know if it's the weather or my medication is just not working but I feel like I can't breathe, I feel like there's not enough air in the room or outside when it's hot and I definitely feel a lot more symptomatic so not really coping, just hiding inside and hoping that it cools down a little bit because it's not fun. I definitely sympathise with you and anyone else that has medical issues affected by the temperature or summer because I dread it. But that is all of the questions, thank you so much to my members for sending them in and of course thank you so much for your continued support. I'll put the name of the Rattay people on screen and if you do want to become a member and have access to exclusive updates and send in any questions to be in videos, things like that, that will all be in the join button underneath this video. Unless, of course, you're watching on mobile then. I'm not sure where the button is going to be, but you can also go to the membership section on my channel, I think. I'm not selling this very well, am I? But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.